Let's go ahead here and take a look now at example number two. In fact, I want you to go ahead and see if you can understand how, to, how we would work through example two here. Notice here that again, we're going to start with an initial guess of x1 is equal to the value of two, and we're going to try to find a third approximation for a solution to this equation. So again, there is probably some value of x that might make this equation true, and we're curious what value it might be. We're taking a starting guess of two, now we can really easily over here see that if we plugged in the value of two, we would end up with the following. We would clearly see that the left hand side would turn into minus one, and clearly minus one does not equal zero. We're not saying that two definitely makes this work, but notice two at least gets both sides relatively close to each other, so maybe the right answer is near two, and that's the whole goal of our starting value. We just want to pick something that gets us kind of close to getting this to work out. So I can see here again that what I should start with is recognizing that Newton's method only applies to finding when functions will actually cross over the x-axis. So we're going to have to go ahead again and start with let's let f of x be equal to a function that we're trying to have hit zero. So how about I let f of x be equal to x to the third minus 2x minus 5. I'm curious when this is going to be equal to 0. When it equals 0, that will be a solution to this equation. Okay. Uh, of course, if I have this, I know to use Newton's method, I'm going to need to understand the derivative here. So that's going to be a 3x squared minus a 2. And so now that we know that x number 1 is going to be our value of 2, I'm curious, can you go ahead and try to repeat what we did in the last video to see if you can find what the values of x2 and x3 would be? Go ahead, pause the video here, try to work this out, and then um, you can unpause the video to see me work through the solutions. All right, well, actually you went ahead, or actually you did go ahead and... Um, try this out, uh, here's what we should have ended up with. Notice I should have done 2 minus f of 2 over f prime of 2. This would have looked like 2 minus a negative 1 over 10. And so I should have gotten a value for my second guess of 2.1. So I would guess that the value of 2.1 is going to make this work, or almost work, it'll work better than the value of 2. So it's my improved guess. Well, now to find x number 3, I would do 2.1 minus f of 2.1 over f prime of 2.1. Now, this is notably here going to be much, much uglier. Uh, I got a value of 0 0.061 for the top and a value of 11.23 in the denominator. If I kind of rounded this off because it is pretty, uh, pretty nasty, I get 2.09457, somewhere in that range. So, we would estimate the solution, we estimate the solution to be x is roughly 2.09457. Now, the cool part is that you could actually, again, go ahead and check this by using a calculator. If I went back to a calculator here, I could see that if I took that value, 2.09457, and I actually raised it to the third power, did 2 times that value, and then subtracted 5, I could see that I don't actually get 0. But note here that I get a value with e negative 4 at the end, meaning times 10 to the negative 4th. So that means that this is actually the value 0 point 0, 0, 0, so notice I have four zeros at the front total, including the one before the decimal point. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 2. So roughly my value, the, my answer coming back from this would be on the left side, I get 0 0.0002 equals 0. Now obviously that's still not right, which is why this is a guess, but notice we're inching closer to a better and better answer. Hopefully you were able to get these values here. Um, if not, hopefully what I explained here was able to 
uh, show you maybe where you went wrong. And in the videos to come, we're going to see how we might be able to speed this process up a little bit because as you probably can tell from the last video and this video that it's a little bit clunky again to plug in these big gross numbers every time and actually try to slowly arrive at answers. Um, in fact, if I was to try to do a lot of approximations, you could see how tedious this would be. Like even if I asked you just to go to like X uh, X uh, number seven. That would be really annoying and take a lot of time. So we'll take a look uh, in the videos to come at how we can speed this process up.